Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 18. We're going to start by looking at what happened in Game Week 17 which technically isn't finished yet and then my plans for Game Week 18 itself. So Game Week 17, because the Bournemouth and Luton game got abandoned, the points yet haven't been figured and at time of making this video we don't yet know what is going to happen for the points. Now the main player that people have from that game is of course Solanke and I've spot checked a number of teams that have Solanke and most of them aren't largely affected if the game was abandoned, the points were wiped and people came off the bench because Solanke is going to get six or nine points depending on the bonus and a lot of people, it seems the majority have somebody coming off the bench who's worth six or seven points anyway. There's one or two that have got Palmer coming off the bench which is a big boost and there's a few more that have someone like Archer coming off for two points. So it's hard to know what's going to happen basically. So I'm making this video based on the points we've got at the moment. So things may change a little bit. But anyway, here we go. Top scorer this week in the Midnight Mule Mini League was Ashton Hurley. The team simply called FC and that's with 85 points. They had Kudos for 16, which is quite a lowly owned player. So that's pretty good. And I think they might be off to the African Cup of Nations soon. Palmer for 14. Watkins for 9. Bowen for 8. Simakas and Dubravka both got 7. LaSalle, Slanky both got 6. Sun 4. Udogi 5. And then no points on the bench. So that's a very impressive score. So in this particular case, if Slanky counts as not playing, then the score is going to go down a bit. Top of our league is currently BV with Giga Chad FC on 1100 points and the top six in this league are better than the best content creators at the moment so I'm pleased about that, that's nice. So we have Alexander Arnold 9, Watkins 9, Bowen 8, Pedro Porro 8, Salas 6, Solanke 6, Simicast 7, Gordon 6. So points all over the place there, that's pretty good. And Ariola didn't play of course on zero points there. And on the bench, Sanchez, who didn't play. And then Semenyo, Gabriel, Trippier. So Gabriel got six points, but if the bournemouth Luton game gets wiped out and counts as not having been played, Solanke goes, but that means Semenyo also goes. So Gabriel will come in for six. So it won't actually make a difference to this score. As for me, I'm in 153rd in our league with 64 points. I had Palmer for 14, then Trent and Watkins for nine, Pedro Porro for eight, Solanke and Salah got six, albeit it's because Salah was captain. White got five. And you'll see I've not got a keeper. That's Sanchez, he didn't play. And on my bench I had Ariola who didn't play. So I have no playing keeper. And then Trippier, of course, didn't play. And then Saliba for seven. So if the Luton-Bournemouth game gets wiped out, Solanke goes for six, I get Saliba for seven. So it doesn't make a massive difference to me. So 64 points. And that's a green arrow, which is nice because I took a hit and I didn't have a goalkeeper and I got a green arrow. So, so I'm quite pleased about that. And the minus four was to get in the keeper that didn't play. But hey, what are you going to do, eh? So overall, I'm seven points inside the one million mark. I'm 208 behind top spot. So if I can outscore top by 10 points a week, I'll end up top. So that's nice. 1,083 subscribers. Thank you very much to everyone who watches these videos and then likes and comments and subscribes. Thank you. So the Content Creators League, this is from FPL Game Week. Of the people I follow, the top one is FPL Fran on 1,059 points. Just a couple of places above FPL Nymphria, and then that which is two above Mark Southerns. And if you go to this site and look at the league, you'd see where you would appear among the content creators. I would be down in 50th. There I am which is one place below FPL Heisenberg, which is several below James from Planet FPL and is, what, nine places beneath Ross, FPL Raptor. Some of you may well know him because he's very popular. So I have already made a transfer, as you may have guessed. I have two keepers. Neither of them are playing at the moment. We know Sanchez is out for several weeks and Ariola was on the bench. He may get some game time coming up. So I have to move one of these on for a keeper that is currently playing. Now, the thing with Sanchez is he's worth more than Ariola, so I'd release more cash if I sell him, and we know Sanchez is out. But Ariola, if both of these went down 0.1, I would lose money on Ariola. I wouldn't lose money on Sanchez. 
So that's the pros and cons for each of those. I was tempted by both Pickford and Dubravka. Pickford's had, I think it's four clean sheets in a row. And Dubravka's very cheap. And in the end, because I'm a cheap guy, I went for Dubravka. And then I also sold Ariola. So I have Sanchez, who's not playing, and Dubravka at the moment. Problem with Dubravka, of course, there's a chance when the January window opens, the transfer window, Newcastle may look to get another keeper. So Dubravka may only have another three games left in him anyway. So in another three or four weeks, I might be making another goalkeeper transfer. But that's okay. Freshen things up a bit. I've bought a transfer for. And I may make a further transfer, which is going to cost me four points if I do. I have three midfielders that are going to be off to the Africa Cup of Nation or the Asian Cups. So he, Chan, he's going to be off after three weeks anyway. So I may sell him. I've not decided yet. And if I do, I'm currently thinking Gordon. But Gordon should be playing or maybe playing midweek. I need to check he's going to survive that game all right. But I've not decided for sure because because it's going to cost me four points. I need to think, is Gordon away to Luton going to get more than four points than He-Chan at home to Chelsea? Which isn't an awful fix to Chelsea. can leak goals. And also He-Chan is very cheap, so I can afford just to bench him for two or three weeks. So I don't need to do this move, but I'm thinking about it. So if I keep he Chan, this is how my team's likely to look. I'm going to have Watkins as captain. And I don't think I've captained him yet this season. But he's at home to Sheffield United. And then the vice captain will be Salah at home to Arsenal. With his mate Trent. And then I've got Pedro Parra at home to Everton with his mate Son. Then I've got he Chan at home to Chelsea. And I believe the other players are all away. Which is Dubravka and Trippier away to Luton. Saka away to Liverpool. Palmer away to Wolves and then Solanke away to Nottingham Forest. That's kind of okay. And then on my bench I've got Sanchez who's out for a while and then Saliba and White away to Liverpool. I may swap the bench order of those two. I, I keep changing my mind but I think they're the two defenders I will be putting on my bench. And then Gio Pedro who plays every game never gets 19 minutes so I'm happy for him to be last and he's quite cheap. As for the background picture, so I like conspiracy theories, I've got to be honest there, and I like looking into them, so uh, there's obviously lots of stuff to do with the moon landing being faked in 1969, and I've looked at the flat earth thing before, and it'd be great if it was true, the flat earth, but I really think it's not, (laughs) I really think it isn't, and for all the um, conspiracy theories about the fake moon landing in uh, 1969, I've seen the rebuttal for every single one. And for each one, it's like, ah, the rebuttal's feasible. So I was kind of on the side of, me. I think man probably did land on the moon in 1969. Not that it matters, it's just interesting. But then there's a new bit of information came out this week and I thought, oh, that's the most compelling so far. And that is there's a bit of AI software that examines real photographs or examines photographs and tells if they've been faked or not, if everything about the environment's real. And it puts little red marks on parts where it thinks the lighting's wrong or other parts are wrong. And the uh, the official NASA photos were put in from the moon landing in 69 and it was red all over the place. <laughs> so AI, which I use a fair bit, reckoned the photos are fake. <laughs> so for me, that's the best argument so far. But of course, a rebuttal can come out and say, ah, but that's because it's the moon and the AI is expecting it to be on the Earth and all this sort of stuff. But anyway, but it's interesting and I'm running out of ideas what to do for a background image. So feel free to put in the comments an idea if you you want me to render something for the background. That's it. That's the unfinished Game Week 17 and my plans for Game Week 18. Let's hope Game Week 18 is a bit of fun. Oh, and it's officially a blank Game Week. But I didn't have any Brentford or Man City players anyway, so it doesn't really affect me. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a good Game Week. Cheers. Bye.